Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It's September 10th, 2018. And let's call to order at 6.45. Um, we have a interesting agenda tonight. We're First is a uh, public hearing uh, concerning the change of manager for the DBA, the O's. And then we have a 7 o'clock meeting with uh, two property owners along Bridge Street concerning a sewer backup. You never get bored of the, on the Board of Selectmen in a small town. <laughs> so I guess first thing we'll do is we need our, uh, we will um, call our public hearing to order concerning the uh, change of manager of the DBA, the O's. So Sherry, what do you got to tell us about this? Uh, we have an application for a change of manager from Kara Fabry, Fabry. Fabry to Kenneth O'Neill uh, doing business as the O's. Uh, the paperwork is all in order and the police, fire and all parties have uh, signed off on the application. Um, good to go. Okay. Mr. O'Neill is here with his attorney tonight. Hey, right, first off, anybody have any questions? Scott, Davey? Questions? Mm -hmm. Good, Mr. Chair. The first question is, does, and this is mainly for folks who will, will be watching because we're not live right now. Uh, does the change of manager have anything to do with the other changes of license? <coughs> well, he um, basically, uh, Mr. O'Neill's going to be, he's not only the manager, but he's taking over the corporation. So ownership. Mm -hmm. Right, he's right. taking Got over it. ownership, and he's doing it through a transfer of stock. Got it. Actually, there isn't a stock because it's an LLC. Sure. Basically, that's what's happening. And the reason I asked the question, again, people who may in the future be watching want to know, well, is a manager a manager or is the company actually changing? And we're hearing now is the company is actually changing. Right. And the way they, it's kind of a, when you fill out the application, you actually check more than one box. Correct. You pick, check the box for manager and also for the change of ownership. Gotcha. So we kind of, he kind of did both. Appreciate that. Um, but anyway, Mr. O'Neill has been in the business, you know, been a manager for a number of establishments prior to this, so he really has a lot of experience, you know. Could you could you uh, address some of those? Ken? Absolutely. Thank uh, you. Thank so you so just, 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 to, just to let you know, okay, we also use this as a, a time for advertising. Shameless so, plug. So if you want to shamelessly plug your business while you're talking to us, we're fine. Now we have people that take advantage of that and some that don't, but uh, if you want to shamelessly pat, you know, about what your plans are, how you, we'd be more than happy to let you uh, expand on it, Ken. Um, yeah, cur currently I just plan on keeping it the same. Uh, I've heard that it's been ran pretty successfully uh, the past years that Chad's owned it. Um, looking to operate it in the same capacity and it's still, uh, it's just basically a change in ownership. Are you going to try to have more food or in the future? Uh, yeah, that's something I'll discuss it later today. Yeah. Cross that bridge later. Okay. Um, I, are you familiar with the history of the O's? I am. Yeah, I grew up in uh, North Amherst. And, okay. Uh, probably goes back as far as Jeff, who owned it, mm -hmm. um, and you know, so I knew him, and then uh, <coughs> going throughout the years, people that have owned it uh, since then, and. You know, I, I do you know it has a long-standing uh, reputation, at least in the community, as a as a bar. Um, but that's I know it was before that as well. But I, that's as far as my memory goes back. Okay, and and I asked it. There's a couple things. A couple things that Kara and uh, um, the ownership have done. Like they they added the outside the outside area. Um, and I can tell you, I can tell you from a, a licensing authority uh, where we've had problems in the past. Okay, and and just a just a heads up, mm -hmm. uh, we have we have had problems in the past 
with too many people inside. Uh, we've had a problem with people coming in doors that weren't um, secured or watched, uh, um, which led to serving of minors. Um, the, the back area, um, just like to try to remind people that it is, you know, noise travels a, a long, long way, especially in the summertime. Uh, so we usually, you know, like to remind, you know, we try to respect the neighborhood um, because the noise, while you may may be on 116, that noise can travel down Silver Lane, Russell Street, down to Hadley Road, and and, and behind also. So um, I, I just and and we have not had any complaints since they put that in. But that was one of the things that we we <coughs> talked to them about what we do as. Um, a license licensing board um, we we will get notifications about um, selling to minors in particular because the, the the county does run there's a task force that that does that kind of stuff and, you, and you're probably well aware of that um, we have a pretty set policy on on, on what we do um, Basically, with a, a new manager, we've always started over. Um, so with us, you start with a clean slate. You know, when, when you take over, you start with a clean slate. Um, so so if there so you right now after the after the first um, like what the suspension for five days or seven days or some time ago, but you're right. It, it's, it's, I mean, we have a policy. The first time is like three days, but a lot of we'll suspend it for a year. So as far as we're concerned, you start, you start at zero. Um, and we, we want you to succeed. We want you to do well. Um, you knew that, you know, the, the, we're not going to, unless, unlike some, um, places, we're not going to tell you how to run your business. You know what closing time is. We, you know, when at closing time, we expect the place to be um, closed. You're not serving. Um, but we're we're pretty easy with that. And and Karen and may have already told you that. Um, but we're not going to say, okay, you can't. You have the last drink is going to be a half an hour. We don't do that. It's your business. We don't we don't want to manage a, any business. Or <laughs> that's part of the same thing. Um, but we do have the police stop by once in a while. They are our, our liquor, alcohol enforcement people, so they, they will stop by once in a while. Um, if, if you have a, a large function where you think you may have a, and if you want to hire, you can talk to the chief and be more than happy to, to have a detail down there with you. So uh, we, we really hope you do really well. And I was serious when I said before, I, we don't, <coughs> ever want to see you here again because that's usually a bad thing unless you want to come and do talk to us about expansion or something like that but the other stuff um, not so much okay yeah any questions all right so Scott for good Mr. Chair just to echo on those points you know this this is what this particular board is taken seriously um, you know its authority as the LL local licensing authority whether it's definition of space or whatever. At the same time, as Tom pointed out, we're not interested in helping anybody run their business. But we do take these licenses as a, a, a view of public safety because of the kind of business that it is. And so as we continue to go on sharing that view, annual license renewals, we'd like to look forward to seeing you on that, or if there's exceptions to something you need to do, whether it's one day or expansion, perfect. But again, the board, has historically looked at this simply as public safety. We understand it's commerce, but there are a fair amount of other agencies that look down on, on, on these kinds of businesses, serving establishments, and um, you know we want to be um, uh, active partners on an annual basis. Sounds good. Okay. All right, Chair, what else we got? We just need a motion to approve the application. Do you have any questions of us, Ken? Um, not at this time, no. Okay. Um, we, just so you know, 
Uh, you'll probably be getting a letter from us shortly that we sent to all that whole day. Uh, it's coming back. Yeah. Again. yeah. <laughs> um, but the uh, in, in the very near future, uh, you'll be getting a letter if you want to stay. We do allow for uh, extended opening on New Year's Eve. Um, we send out a, a, a letter, but just so you know, if it's, it's, it's not a right, you have to apply for it. Right. And we go through the same process. We talk to the the, the police department, fire department, and, and uh, I, I noticed that uh, the chief had talked about, uh, fire chief had talked about smoking, smoke detectors being yes. installed, yeah. and that's all set. That's all set. Um, we, we got all kinds of reading to do, so. Um, this, so as long as the smoke detectors are all set, Steve said Steve's going to schedule the inspection. Okay, good. Um, David, any questions? No, no, all set. We'll throw the paperwork in there. So, all right, I will entertain a motion at this time. We'll make a motion. We have a motion made. Uh, <coughs> second, the change of manager as applied. We have a uh, motion to change. <coughs> Manager of the uh, DBA of the O's. Uh, you all set? You can't go back after we vote yes, you know. <laughs> also, <laughs> all right, all in favor of the uh, transfer of manager of the O's, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3 0 vote. Congratulations, Tim. You are now the manager. Excuse me, I just have one quick question. Um, we just voted, so it's. Do you, have to, do you have to separately vote for the transfer of the ownership, or is that included in the managers? Because I know it's a two-part form. Um, well, it's an interesting question because on, on our agenda, on our agenda, we only have the change of manager. The paperwork uh, reflects that it is a change of manager and transfer of license. was all referenced in the um, ad that we did in the newspaper as well. The various items on the actual application. Was listed in the ad, correct? Yes. And the, the manager. Well, it was the manager and the change of ownership. See, it's a joint. Change of manager. Would you also consider the change of beneficial interest, transfer of ish or issuance of trans of stock and pledge of collateral? So okay. So Using the generic, we can borrow the public statement. Mm -hmm. So that said, we have an ownership as well. Not property, but license for right. yes. managing as well as ownership of the corporation. Yes, and the beneficial interest. Got it. So the ABCC is that is it they did the uh, they would have done the uh, the check on the ownership mm -hmm. for the license as well. All of this paperwork will go to them, and it usually takes about six to eight weeks for them to do their investigation right. and they to approve the license. The first step is the local license and licensing authority. Once you approve it, it goes to Boston. And, and, uh, I have been in touch with them, and I did have a certificate of. Good standing for the LLC. We have all the paperwork. So yeah, every see time. they won't they won't look unless you approve and, it first. Until you they say don't because it's the first time. Because yeah. they feel that they would be kind of stepping on your toes if they started anything before you approve. All right, Scott, we want to uh, look at the name of the corporation. Make, make a second motion. Well, the the court new it won't change names. The corporation no. will stay the same. Got it. So the uh, amend the motion to allow for the change of manager as described and the name of the licensee is still the O's LLC. But the beneficial new, interest right, new, new, ma new manager is Kenneth O'Neill. Second. Okay, we have a mo made, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Sherry, you got that motion? I do. Mm -hmm. Three zero vote. Kenneth O'Neill, congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Best. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Congratulations. Council the day off. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you went out there. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we've got a couple minutes. Yes, sir. I have a question related but unrelated to this year. Sure. Does someone have a um, system in their licensing where if you have an individual that's um, business or whatever that isn't complying with, um, say, the Board of Health or something like that, where you can hold up the license? Oh, like the renewal or something? Yeah, on a renewal. I, I know like, say, they're not paying their taxes. Yeah, we have a bylaw. Yeah. Same thing with same thing with like a board of health or something like that. In other words, if they're not complying to some of their some of the okay. so what, 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 yeah whatever what, whatever board it is. Yeah, and they notify us too. The board of health will let us know that you know, business ABC is out of compliance with whatever the issue is. And if there's outstanding taxes, there's a bylaw in place for non renewal. Or we can revoke or suspend as well. Yeah. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yeah, so I know we do have a, like I said, I do know we have a bylaw. Yeah. And you have, and, and, and I think the bylaw says that you have to be in compliance with all the time. Right, so the call the regulation. Yeah. To answer, if I could, Mr. Chair, yep. change of manager requires obviously the monetary piece, Corey authorization, vote of our entire board. Prior to that, it incorporates the DOR cert, the DUA cert, again, Corey authorization, and then adherence to our bylaws plus inspection from public safety. That's both the chief of police as well as the fire department. So they've got to be in good stead before it can be transferred. They didn't have, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they actually had an impact on it yeah. because of the non payment tax. Yeah, yeah, great point. Yeah, and we get PNS agreement and then supporting financial record to the last uh, the last pieces in that piece, uh, on that litany I just read off. Yeah. Okay, so the reason we keep these big binders here. Yeah. <laughs> We have seven o'clock. We have a uh, meeting with Mr. Zachary and Mr. Chozlowski. Mr. Zachary comments this evening. Good morning. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was he? He actually called me and asked me what was on. Nope. I would assume. You want to wait a couple seconds? Yeah. Okay. Uh, minutes of. Uh, okay, thank you. The minutes of the uh, August 20th. Uh, make a motion on that. Okay, a motion made. <laughs> I'll second that. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We accept three zero. Uh, board of Selectment updates, Scotty? Yeah, if I could, Mr. Chair, the last uh, week, uh, there was a meeting in the Frontier Regional Capital Planning Group. Uh, we are desperately close to a final document. And we anticipate meeting on the 25th at 5.30 to finalize uh, our document with respect to capital planning. The discussions was centered around the scale of the first phase of capital uh, expenditures and the infamous list of backlog of work. And uh, John Mercanian spent a fair amount of time describing again to the group how those financing uh, elements work. I think it's important that at our next meeting, that um, as brought up by Fred Olosky from Wheatley, that members of the municipal uh, finance committees are invited so they can understand some of these um, challenges about capital. As you recall from his history, the, the first pass of this was about a year ago now. Yeah, the district came to us and asked came to the towns and, and floated the idea of taking care of a backlog of work um, through a debt authorization. And that debt authorization happened to coincide with the retirement of the uh, construction bonds. Then the uh, dialogue was centered around well, what kind of work are we talking about and what kind of work is really responsible to be borrowed for. And so it's been very, very good. It's been very, very good. The last pieces of uh, definition as well as execution were part of our our um, meeting last week again we want to meet exclusively on the 25th 
and then present to the board at Frontier that only has a single agenda item because frankly a year's worth of work is a fair amount of no to noodle over. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there is a uh, 120 North Main Street meeting this Thursday morning at 10 in Springfield with uh, developer and the DEP uh, that I'll be attending, as well as uh, um, members from the 120 North uh, working group. And this has to do with the closing of the comment period the DEP had about the parcel on 120 North Main and Berkshire Design, RDI, and uh, members of the community and anybody else uh, can go there and hear what the um, path forward is. Mm -hmm. And that's this Thursday at 10. Thank you, Scotty. Davey? Um, looks like we're, our personnel review thing is getting underway, so we'll probably be having a personnel committee meeting in the next several weeks or so. So we start in that. I would just like to add, I was uh, um, congratulate uh, Natalie on a campaign well run um, to, to work or run against or seven people total is an amazing thing. Proud of the field, yeah. And to be able to get your, to be able to get your um, position across um, is very difficult because whenever you do have group meetings, there's seven people talking, and Takes you don't get a lot of yeah. time, so <laughs> yep. um, congratulations to Natalie. And, and I also would like to extend my congratulations to those that may have not have garnered as many votes. Um, but in today's, to, in today's to, to even run for a political position is very difficult because of the connotations mm -hmm. sometimes that people put to those positions. Um, but it was, I, I did have the opportunity to talk to many of the, the, the seven that ran for um, the state rep and also the four that ran for the uh, state Senate. Senate. And we were very lucky to have people that were as energetic and willing to serve as we had. So we were very fortunate to have 11 very, um, very, very good candidates. And, and, and I'd like to thank each one of them. And it is important. It, it's very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of stuff gets happened on, on the local level. So Natalie's got a, um, now a campaign for the general election, which is in November. It'll be a little easier. Yes. It, it, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure she hopes it's easier. Yeah, but right. uh, um, but uh, just want to let everybody know that uh, I, I think that voting primaries it is very, very important. And um, people came out in the town of Sunderland. I would just like to thank all the people in the town that did vote because it was a, a very, I thought, very important vote. Uh, replacing Steve and Stan, two two members uh, yeah. that have been in, in position for 25 years plus. So, and both Steve would, as a vice chair of the, the Ways and Means and Stan, who's the president of the Senate, are very uh, influential positions. So um, they, Joe and Natalie have big shoes to fill. I hope that they that they pick up and keep running the ball that's you know to pick, carry that ball that's been handed down. So congratulations to all of them. And a lot of freshmen in Boston. Correct, correct, David. Very good. All right, so we are stalling time for that we can get Mr. Zachary and. Am I late? I thought I was seven. <laughs> I was seven o'clock. You're, you're right on. It's seven o three. You're by oh, game okay. line. We're not live. We're not live tonight, so we're yeah. seven o'clock now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Barry was telling us stories about the old days. You had oh, all okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not that. Maybe not that old. <laughs> not, 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 not the good ones. Yeah. All right. So, so John and Barry, they've been here before, right? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I wasn't here, so now I am. Um, I don't know if we, Sherry, can you uh, give us a, a synopsis of where we stand right now? Um, I think at the last meeting with them, you asked us to take a look at deeds for easements, review the um, sewer regs, and that we did. Uh, we have no easements on the deeds. Scott, you have the copies of them. The only right. easements that were referenced were to the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Is it good, Mr. Chair? The, the request was about 
uh, reimbursement for cleanup of a sewer backup. And as, as was pointed out when uh, Rich was here, as well as the information John and Barry brought, was that there is a there are, and I'm carefully choosing the descriptions because it meets the bylaw. There are building ties, which are the building ties to a single building tie to the municipal source. The municipal source of the law wasn't wasn't necessarily known at the time. Is clearly defined by the sewer operator as a municipal source of correct size for the application and in need of being added to our inventory. So we actually go from one, two, and three. This is the, the old, old garage, uh, Billy's and the first house. They tie together, scoot under the road, and they tie all the way over to School Street. So, so okay. Uh, uh, one one question. Sure. Did 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 they um, they located the sewer? Did, right. So so you yep. had Fletcher come in, yep. right? Fletcher came in, yep. and and they gave they uh, they used a sign and they they located. A yeah, we were the road. out after the meeting. We were out sign on the school street and stuff. And the big question is that you guys were supposed to look at was what you've done in the past because it was out in the town feeder, not in not in our connections, mm -hmm. where the blockage was. And it's, it's Barry chooses Barry chooses those words, I think, wisely. Our blockage was out here. And if you look at the way the sewers are defined, the owners are um, in responsibility for install and maintenance of what's called the building sewer. And if you look at our bylaw, the building sewer ends at what's, what's considered the municipal tie. And it's really, really clear that the municipal tie is, is, is oh, yeah. back here, where this is a combined branch, could be argued, but again, mm -hmm. back to a blind tap on School Street. Rich uh, was very clear that no we, were, no, we no need to get a man right in here. Not in the right place, but right. it's there. Right. And so with respect to those definitions, I think that's important to bear in mind, you know, cost and expenses, insulation, repair, borne by applicant or property owner for a building tie. Well, there's three buildings that can join and they run across the street here. Now, Rich was really clear that in today's construction, that wouldn't be the method that was used because of materials. Now, you could still combine it and branch, but the materials might be something different. Mm -hmm. And he came back with a written correspondence to the board saying, the sewer commissioner saying that we should actually have a, a hydrojet uh, maintenance plan as well as a capital plan to have it lined quickly rather than later because this happens to be right here as a root infiltration as well as construction of, a, of an access way, a manhole right there. The last piece I'd bring, Mr. Chair, is that... What kind of pitch is on that? Lazy. That's a problem. <laughs> lazy, lazy. It's, well, you know, it's worked for... It's, it still works. I, I completely agree with that. Um, yeah, until until you put those low fold to the low flow toilets in. Well, there's, there's, there's now, now you don't have a bunch of that. Yeah, well, you know. it's true. I mean, it said before you got a five gallon. Now you got one point six or one point four. So, right. uh, there's a reason that we all looking to see if it went down. Yeah, because you can't believe the amount of water that you just got to use. Sure. It's the only exception in um, our our uh, bylaw is a building where a building tie are two buildings on the same run, but they're stands in the rear of the building and on the exterior, no private sewers available and can be constructed the rear of the building through an adjoining alley, courtyard, or driveway. Building sewer from the front of the building may be extended to the rear of the building, and the whole considered as one sewer. So it's building through building, and it doesn't quite describe what this is. So I'll leave the building. What, what, what's, what's the, what type of pipe is it? Clay pipe? Clay pipe, six inch clay. Two foot section in the yeah. Six inch? Six to eight inch. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Rich actually has the has the, the wand with the video. He's seen it. Yeah. 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 So in this um, case, go ahead. Well, I, I was just it was just interesting because I mean that the old the sewer plant used to be down there, so right. well, I mean was that I mean that was probably how it was put in at that time. Oh, that way, right. Mm -hmm. Instead of going out, mm -hmm. 
to, to uh, pick up our on main main street, right? Because the sewers on the east side of Main Street, right? South Main Street, I think. Yeah, yeah. this would be all on the side. On the right. east side, correct. So it was easier for them to come across like that. It tied the school and then it tied across and went. Out. Well, no, it went down. To the well, down yeah, the original, the original, right. that, yeah, yeah. Hmm. John, it was like under 1500 bucks total, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I have a, and Sherry had emailed me about it. Yeah. Even her stuff, and I made a copy of it. Yeah, that's a great We did include. So how, long, how, long, how, how long was it? 1276 was the number. 1276 dollars. I feel like the people's court right now. <laughs> you know, this is as I as I said as I said at our prior meeting, Mr. Chair. You know, we, we where's Rust? Oh, there's Rust. Rusty. There's, there's, there's Rusty the bailiff yeah, right. over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as I, as I said, as I said at the first meeting, it's unfortunate circumstance to unearth some infrastructure that you know clearly we we collectively are, are tied to the sewer system. So how the question is, it should unfortunate yeah. Billy. He yeah. tells you how long they usually how far they jetted. They put a fuel charge. When, when the gas prices went crazy, they put that five dollar fuel charge and never came off after the prices yeah. went back down. It's usually how. <laughs> okay, so so uh, they want to abate that bill, okay? I'd like to be reimbursed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to abate or you want to be reimbursed? Abate mm -hmm. would take probably a couple of years for it. <laughs> so abate. <it. laughs> they want money. I think we want to uh, be reimbursed for it, if that's okay. possible, but also to talk about long-term maintenance on what the plan is there, because we don't want to have to get down in the basement and clean up that much right. raw sewage yeah. out of the basement again. Yes. So we just submitted an application for the capital grant, and in that grant request, we did request $20,000 for installation of a manual yeah. on School Street. So that's pending. We should hear probably the end of October. Is that something the state pays for? No, but is it the state? <coughs> okay, and then we have to do something separate for the relining, right? That would be separate. Mm -hmm. That would probably be <coughs> capital at the. What do you What do you think, Scott? I, I and, and I'm 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 talking about the long term maintenance mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. I I I'd rather. I mean, if we did it today, we we probably want to. I mean, put a. Uh, a pump, you know, we'd want to pump, we'd want to force. Well, I mean, you want to have a lift. Especially, have, especially if it has a lazy pitch. Correct. We I mean, know it has a lazy pitch because of the <coughs> depth of this here. We yeah. asked the sewer operator. Nobody shot the pitch. What's that? Nobody shot the pitch. Nobody knows really. Like We're calling it lazy because there were some low spots where water would yeah. accumulate a little bit. But I mean, it was really more due. I mean, it's been running for All right. a long, a long time. time. Yeah. And, uh, so there was there was two there was two, <coughs> two areas of discussion when um, the sewer operator was asked asked for homework. The first was how hard would it be to get the building side together and get to South Main Street, which is over here, right? And that, that's it's capitally intense, and there's a fair amount of crossing of private property. Yeah. The second was how do we get this lined and get a manway access way at that blind tie right there, so that it can actually be serviced, and that may afford some help with the final discharge points as we get out of School Street and head over to uh, North Main and then out where you tie into, tie into the, um, the home run that heads down to this. I mean, that sewer at School Street seven or eight feet deep anyway. <coughs> so the email thread from Rich uh, was that this is, this is easily maintained and relatively inexpensive, capitalized to line. That keeps the root infiltration out from basically the highway to where it ties into School Street. And that can be something that's in a couple year short capital plan. 
Okay, but don't we need don't we need easements across property? Well, it's a great question. You know, we actually. I, I mean, you you got infrastructure there under those easements. Exactly. So, that, I mean, was, that was that was that was our homework, and yeah. there are no easements across that yeah. space. How do you have the Commonwealth? Right. How do you how do you have how do you have mm -hmm. your utilities pass under right. without having an easement? Right. Conveniently, it goes right down a curb cut. So at least that part's good. Somebody was thinking. I think, Tom, if I could, Mr. Chair, that, that piece of easement work may well be our next phase of, of legal homework. <coughs> we have one with the Commonwealth. We don't have one with whatever this, these parcels are listed. Yeah, I, and, and I, I, I just, a, a, I am concerned because there's not a demand hole there. I agree. I am concerned because it, and again, may have, may have operated From, from my experience, my professional experience, when we when we changed to the low flow toilets, a lot of problems started to come show up that never sure. never had happened before. Well, okay. um, I just want you know, so we had a change. You know, now you have a change of use. You know, you know, you've got a restaurant inside there. They may use it differently than how it was used before. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm not talking about you guys, I'm talking about long term because John, John made a point we don't want it to happen again. Yeah. And, and, and I just think that we need to talk to mm -hmm. Rich about different, I mean, I mean it's easy to figure out the pitch, right over run. It's, yeah. not, it's not hard, so. Well, I would actually say it's probably less use now over, over there than when I was, when I was there running. You think so? Well, I had 25 employees, you tell me how many Times the bathroom gets used with 25 employees. Anytime I wanted to break, I use the bathroom. Five minutes after they stand bread. Hey, but see, but, but using it more like that, but using it more like that is a better thing because you have more water flowing. Right. Water was flowing. Exactly. I, I, I'm just thinking about long term, John, mm -hmm. and, and I think I want to talk to Rich about, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. One nice, one saving grace is there's an outfall from the center building, the Billy's building. Yeah that they were actually able to use as the primary feed for the jet rod. So it was um, acknowledged by the operator that that's a home run. We don't have to get inside of these buildings to actually maintain that in a, in a, in a pretty regular fashion. Well, yeah. But jet rod and clay tile over time is a whole other animal. Yeah, but, but if, you, if you have, well, but now, yeah, because now you, with the right. restaurant, you're talking right. greases and- Well, they have and, a grease trap, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but it has, to be, it has to be maintained. Correct. But if you have a manhole there, then, then you jet rod from the manhole and you pull back. the stuff back to right. you right. so that you can get, and then you can back it out exactly. if you have to. But, like, right, that is, at, until the manhole gets there, mm -hmm. it's problematic. Correct. You yeah, you want to be drawing it all back this way. Yeah. But the property yeah. with the easement is, where is their tie? Does their tie go into that line or do they go right out the school? Street? According to um, <laughs> the <laughs> treatment plant operator, all the ties on School Street were identified, and this one was not because it came in blind. There's no way to find it. Right. Hmm. So none of the adjacent properties tie into this particular line? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They are, they're all documented. All the properties on School Street are documented as tied to the system. Yeah. So it's not right. like one of the homes or this building or That's wherever right. else yeah. is, is not going to be registered. These are all laid out on the, on the, sewer, on the sewer map. All right, well, I think we still need to talk. So we, 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 talk about Mr. Yeah, yeah. we have to talk about uh, Mr. Uh, Zachary's uh, concerning. Correct. So uh, I will take a motion, if we can. Sure. I, I would move, actually, we reimburse the private to property the owners for the uh, incurred costs for the clean out, knowing that there were multiple buildings and the backup was on our, uh, on the, on the, operator's side of the branch if it was one building before any of these and it was unearthed right. thank you for unearthing it but it's still one building right. this yeah. was out this was out here and again as i said in the prior meeting it's an unfortunate circumstance that leads us to something that we find out correct so what do you have for uh what do you oh. have for uh, reimbursement that's uh 12 76 25. Uh, and you want to go to it's going to go to Sacri 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 Construction. Construction, correct? Okay, so I would accept the motion. 
for that. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, tangentially, we have homework to do with respect to the, to the tie. Right. Uh, and we need to make sure that John and Barry are in part of that dialogue with us and Rich. Well, I, I think sh the Sherry is going to have to talk as well as to, to, to Barry and mm -hmm. John about future maintenance of it until mm -hmm. the manhole gets in. Correct. Right? Okay. Um. I think they were long, well, they got, they were able to uh, hydro jet down pretty far, I think 300 feet on that line, but not all the way to the sewer. The actual tie, sure. School street, I think. That's about as far as they could go. So they recommended, you know, once a year anyway, mm -hmm. blasting that thing out just to, because of that. That's period. about all the holes they got, isn't it? I think that's about all they had. Maybe there's other outfits that have more holes. A bigger truck if they if you take a inch hole because they think they probably use their half or three quarter and that's they about they weren't huge I was surprised they were half inch yeah. yeah and I think they got they only got about about three hundred lateral three hundred feet a long ways for them yeah. the bigger truck will have one inch or inch and a half and they can go six hundred feet pretty pretty who had the pleasure of that. Did did they bring their did they bring their uh, trailer yeah. That's about the biggest Fletcher goes to. So maybe maybe another contractor that can get farther down if we can get all the way to that to that tie. Nice. And we can get past the roots and at least yeah. get us a little breathing room. Yeah. We, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have to schedule the time to talk to Rich. I have a meeting with him much. on Thursday, so I'll mm -hmm. can, can can you call me? Sure. All right. Okay, and I'll I'll let him know my concerns. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, you have a motion made and seconded to reimburse Zachary Construction for uh, work that was done on the town's sewer main through, through, uh, through discovery. Right, through discovery. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Sure. Okay. Sorry it happened, guys. Oh. Not to have it happen again. That's the best, that's exactly right. best news we could have. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Many times. Okay. Next up, town administrator updates. Thanks for uh, that. We just have one from Susan. We've been looking at employee life insurance mm -hmm. um, since the switch from um, the Hampshire Trust yeah. to Maya. So we can no longer purchase the $2,000 employee life insurance. They just they don't do that anymore. Um, Boston Mutual will keep the retirees on through the H, um, Hampshire Trust. Um, so the, what she did find was a $5,000 uh, policy for active employees. And um, the cost of that is about $8 per month. And it's a 50-50 split. Um, so she wanted to get permission um, from the board. How does that fit inside the annual appropriation? Um, it's a 50-50 split, so we um, should be fine as far as the appropriation goes. So we, the employees gain coverage and we stay inside the appropriation? Correct. That seems like it's pretty easy. Yeah. Does not feel work out that way. And this is through another underwriter, right. and it's based on current uh, employees. Active level. employees. Okay. Active full time? Yeah, that are benefits eligible. Okay. So again, if, 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 the, uh, if the proposal from the treasurer is for an expansion of the benefits from two to 5,000, 2,000 annually to 5,000 annually, and the 50 50 split is equal to the current distribution? Yes, I believe the appropriation that we are all uh, set with that. The problem now is they just don't make the, they just don't write the $2,000. No, no, I understand that. I'm thinking about if, if I see it, if I see it in my paycheck, right? Mm -hmm. Or if the town appropriation is, is overexpended, those, those two things are, are pretty dramatic. If, mm -hmm. it's, if it's apples to apples and it's only $5,000 coverage versus two, the employee doesn't see a bump in their uh, required contribution, and the town doesn't see a required contribution increase. Fine. Okay. 
I'll just double check with her, but right. I don't, I don't right. think it's an issue. Yep. Uh, uh, move, move to accept the treasurer collector's uh, recommendation on life insurance for eligible employees based on it being comparable, that yeah, neutral, based on it being neutral. Okay, a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by signing aye. Aye. Three zero, Sherry. Okay, an additional town administrator updates? Nope, that's all I have at this time. That's it? Okay. Um, at this time, I just want to address the uh, viewing audience. Unfortunately, we're not live because of a component that went down inside of our, our switch gear. Um, that component's going to be installed shortly, so we should be back to normal next at our next meeting. Um, this so we all need the camera. Yeah. You're watching. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else on the time ministry updates? Uh, appointment of Stanley Mishkoski for the Veterans Memorial Committee. Uh, I would move uh, Mr. Mishkoski's appointment uh, for the current appointment cycle to the Veterans Memorial Oversight Committee and thank him for his volunteering. You know, he has time in service and a, de a de dedicated family. It sounds like a great fit. We have motion thank made and second. second. Stanley has retired recently, so. I guess you needed something to do. Yeah, I'm, stay out of trouble, right? Uh, well, <laughs> I, and again, I really appreciate your uh, volunteering and uh, good luck, my friend. All those in favor of Stanley Mishkoski as a member of the VMOC, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 3 0 Sherry uh, to appoint uh, Stanley to the remainder of the appointment cycle, and this will be replaced, and uh, we have a Position Janet available Conley. because of Janet Conley. I was, so, uh, I was just going to wee in there, Mr. Chair. Yep. Yeah. Uh, relocation to Virginia. So thank you, Stanley. Uh, approval of aggregate energy plan. Sherry? Um, the next step in the aggregation process is to post the plan um, that was submitted by Colonial Power. Um, at the town and on the website, and to allow a public comment period. It uh, should be posted for three weeks, and um, after that, uh, the board can approve the plan and they will submit it to DPU, and, and the process will continue. So basically, you'll be putting out the, uh, the plan for review for the next three weeks. Okay. Dave, go ahead, Scott. If I could, Mr. Chair, it's important to bear in mind that the plan as is being presented right now <coughs> is not the choice of suppliers nor is it this is the process right nor is it the, the the final document this is the submission to the department of energy doer for colonial power and the town to have reviewed an aggregation plan. Not necessarily, this is the ins and outs, this is the boards of selectmen's responsibilities, staffings and manpowers, this is the supply contract, how a SA may, if it's chosen, is executed, how to terminate an agreement, how to opt out of an agreement, and that's an active discussion these days, and uh, equitable rate of equitable treatment of ratepayers. It's that kind of element. This is the framework of what we have to submit to the state before a final decision is brought to the town for its input. So this input is important and then if it's adopted those choices of potential energy providers comes back to the town as a next stage. Kind of like the rules of the road. This is the exactly. rules of the road, exactly. This is, this is essentially, this is essentially the, the, the submit a submission of a, um, a corporate document. Yeah. Right? Well. Letters of incorporation. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and basically it says in there that, um, I, I think it's an in, in, interesting comment, is that the plan does not mean that it's, it's the most economical plan put forward. No, this is this is the rules of the rules of providing electricity. That's all this is. Yeah. 
So there, there's a, it's, it's a pretty extensive document. It, yeah. It's what, it's, it's what ha it's what plays, what has to be done to, to play by the rules. Correct. So I would say, do we have it online? I was waiting for your approval. Okay. Move to move to approve the submittal. Again, this is going to be posted for three weeks before it moves anywhere. Okay. Okay. Motion made. Second. All right. All those in favor of the approval of the submittal of the plan for public viewing for the next three weeks, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Three zero. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, not under selectman's updates. I think I'm all good. Dave, are we all set? I'm good. Anything else, Sherry? Well, if I, if I have one other thing, Mr. Sure. Sherry, if I could. So this is, this is in the, uh, the annual awareness, right? It's getting darker a little earlier. It is. Whole bunch of a whole bunch of people moved into town in the last two weeks. Was that what that was all about? Yeah. <laughs> so I would just I would just make sure to yes. remind people it's that time of year. Pay attention. Yep. New faces in town. Yeah. Anything else, David? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Um just to let, remind everyone that October less than less than 30 days from now, October 5th, 6th, and 7th, Sunday, we'll have our second part of the 300 celebration. There's going to be a car show and a tractor show on Main Street on the Saturday. I believe it's the sixth. Um, they're going to be the ghosts of Sunday. They're going to be making a return. Scott, right? Yeah. They're going to make a parade down Main Street, and they're going to be drawn by a horse-drawn hearse. Mm. A horse-drawn hearse, and they're going to, um, that's going to go down into the cemetery, I believe? Correct. Riverside Cemetery, there'll be two presentations from, I think, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and uh, there's going to be a circuit where the FRTA is providing a, uh, a trolley. I think the pickups and drop-offs are being finalized, but an initial discussion is Drop off at the cemetery, and the circuit includes the elementary school as well as public safety complex mm -hmm. in one circuit to kind of avoid the pieces that are going on South Main. But I would say, as we get closer to the date, pay attention to the website. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice some signs have been going up about the uh, the strolling and something on, yep. on that day. Yes. Yep. So um, it should be an interesting weekend. Um, I would just uh, like at Scott asked. Uh, uh, more information to coming and we look forward to the continuous celebration and it will be kicked finalized on the uh at the uh the gala ball and i think they're probably tickets. is that that weekend no it's, it's in november, november. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes it november. november hopefully we'll get as lucky as we did with the parade with the weather yeah good point good oh point. yeah that kind of reminds me too it's national emergency preparedness good point Mary Governor, and especially with the weather going down, um, and there's two this is the first time and it might be ever, I, I don't quote me on that, but they've had four hurricanes at the same time. All stacked up. In the, in the same basin, so you may want to just make sure you get some a little supply of water and a few other things. Um, you never know. Check your plan. Yep. Check your plan. Okay. Um, anything else? Motion? Uh, move to adjourn. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thankfully, David seconded. He said reluctantly. No. <laughs> no. Reluctantly. Yeah, motion, David seconded. All those in favor of a tonight's meeting, please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.